Hello. This system, we have four types of sensors. And we have the gas sensor, the flame sensor, the temperature and humidity sensor, and the ultrasonic sensor. Okay, in this um, other breadboard, we also have a, a buzzer and an LED to notify users when um, the sensor senses any detection, all right? So um, we also have an LED screen right here that shows us the temperature, the humidity, the gas level, and also the, um, the water level for the ultrasonic sensor. All right, so the first uh, sensor that we have is the gas sensor, which is right over here. So um, before the gas sensor senses anything, the gas value is 63. All right, so let's test. As you can see, the gas value um, jumped up to 66 and the buzzer goes off and the LED lights up. And also, as you can see, um, in the Blink app, we can receive, we receive a gas leak detection. And so the value here changes, right? All right, the next sensor we have is the flame sensor. All right, let's see if it works. As you can see, the buzzer um, beeps and the LED lights up. And also, we can test it again. As you can see, uh, we receive a notification that fire was detected in the Blink app. All right, for the next sensor, we have the temperature and humidity sensor. So before any changes, the temperature and humidity sensor is 29.8 and uh, the humidity is 70. So let's try and see. See if there's any changes. Yep. Um, the temperature uh, jumped up to 30.2 and the humidity dropped by one. All right, last but not least is the um, ultrasonic sensor, which we'll be using to measure the water level. All right, so originally the water level is 44. So let's test it out. So when it senses, it um, changes to 1211. And we have a, we received a notification stating that the water level is high. And the beeper uh, sounds and also the LED lights up. In this video, I will show and explain how we connect and store the sensor values from Node and CU to MySQL database. Firstly, this is the code to define host URL. And next, this is the code to declare global variables which will be uploaded to server. Followed by... This is the code to connect to host where my SQL database is hosted. And this is the code used to specify content type header. And next, this is the code to send post request to PHP file and store server response code in variable name HTTP code. This is the code we use to determine whether the connection is successful or not. If the connection is successful, then it will show on the serial monitor values uploaded successfully. And if if the connection is failed, then it will show on the serial monitor failed to upload values. Now I'm showing you the table write.php in this file contain the code that we use to fetch data from node and CU and insert the value sent from node MCU into MySQL database. If successfully connected to the database, when I run tablewrite.php, it will show connected to MySQL database. Next, I'm showing you the tablewrite.php file. In this file contain the code we use to retrieve data from database um, to display all values on the web page. Now continue with the database. As you can see, this is the database we use to store all the sensor values. Finally, as you can see, this is integrated IoT-based system sensor data, which display all sensor value from database. So instead of just displaying the values, the user are also able to use this search function 
to filter and view data according to a specific date. So for example, let's say I enter this date. So the table will show the data only on this specific date. And the rest the rest data will be hidden. That's all for me. Thank you. Hello everyone, so my name is Nadra and today I'm going to explain the overall coding for a fully integrated IoT-based system project. So basically, first of all, before we can import those required libraries, as you can see here, we first need to install all of these required libraries from Library Manager of Arduino IDE. And then only we can define and include over here, else you will get an error. So first, we define Blink Print Serial, which basically is to print out the value that we got from the sensor to the digital dashboard interface of Blink application that we're going to use. And then include Liquid Crystal I2C is basically for LCD display, as LCD display also we're going to use for this system in order to display the value on the LCD. And then include ESP8266 Wi-Fi. This is to declare the library that we're going to use for the microcontroller of Node MC USB 8266. And then again, we include the library of Blink Simple ESP8266 for the Blink application to be used with the Node MCU. Right after that, we move forward with DHT.h. This is the DHT sensor library that we're going to use for DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. And last one, we include ESP8266 HTTP client.h because we want to sense the value from the node MCU to the front end side. So next, we move forward to the next part where we need to set access point of network credential first. So char out is actually the authentication token that we got from Blink application once we sign up the application. And then SSID is where we set our Wi-Fi name. Char pass is basically to set a valid Wi-Fi password that we use. And then we start to declare the LCD, DHT11 sensor and also Blink timer, where basically for this part, we initialize the DHT11 sensor as we are using DHT11 sensor of temperature and humidity. So we declare it over here. E7 is basically the digital pin 7 of the not MCU that we're going to plug in the DHT11 sensor over there. Meanwhile, for the blink timer is that it allows to send a data practically with given intervals where it is not interfering Blink library routine. So now is where we start to define all of the components that we have been using for this project system, where all of this will be connected to digital pins of Node MCU ESP8266. So first, we define the flame sensor to digital pin of 0, and then LD to digital pin of 3, puzzle to digital pin of 4, MQ2 gas to digital pins of ADC0 and then ultra strict and ultra echo is actually for ultrasonic pin out where it have trick and echo so we uh, define it to digital pins of D5 and D6 meanwhile for the SDA and also SCL is basically for pin out of LCD display where both of these we had declared or defined to digital pin of D1 and D2 of node MCU ASP8266. And define host is basically is for host URL that we're going to use for the front end sites of uh, our website header. And then declare the limit value of sensor. This part is where we had declared the limitation of value for each of the sensor. For guess, sensor where the gas limit we have set to 59 and the value ultra is we have set to 50 and the rest we have declared earlier in order for us to use uh, for the purpose of to send the value to the backhand side 
Now, moving forward to the void setup function is where we start to initialize the stream communication monitor at 9600 baud speeds per second and then once when the code has been successfully uploaded, it will then print on the serial monitor communication started. And lcd.init is where we initialize the LCD. As you can see over here, this is where we have been declared the output or input of the pins for each of the sensor and also the components that we have been using for this project. Where for the buzzer, we have set it as output as it giving a sound and then for the flame we put it as input ultra streak and ultra echo it's going to be two different kinds of pins that are going to be giving different kinds of output so for trick of the ultrasonic we set it as output and for the echo we set it as input and for LED, we set it as output as it will be turn on the light or turn off the light. So it considered as an output. So here, Blink and DHT11 libraries begin, which means once the it runs the void setup functions, the Blink application as well as the sensor of temperature and humidity libraries will start to begin. And blink.begin authentication as a ID and also pass is basically the blink will start to attempt to connect to the specific authentication token that uh, the user has been stated earlier on the above part and also together with the Wi Fi name and also the Wi Fi password as well. And then dht.begin is basically we have initialized the dht sensor. Okay, next over here is the main functions are called. Okay, so all of the functions that we have been declared earlier, here we put or we set the intervals of each of the sensor where it will be printed out on the serial monitor. Okay, so for the DHT11 sensor, we set it to 100. Okay, and the rest is 1000. For the sensor function part, we are going to start with the first sensor which is DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. As you can see over here, we are declaring a flood variable for both humidity and also temperature in order for us to get the reading values that produced by the humidity and also temperature sensor. The reason why we have choose the variable of flood is because the value that produced from DHT11 Temperature and humidity sensor is expected to be within a decimal values. Thus, that's the reason why we are declaring a flood variable for both of it. So now, once when the code has been successfully uploaded, it will first check if the sensor could get a reading from both humidity and also temperature. So it will using if condition over here. Let's say if it fails to get the reading from both humidity and temperature, it will then prompt on the serial monitor stated that fail to read from the HD11 temperature and humidity sensor. At the same time, the buzzer will be turned on. And return, it will be written back to the first and will check again whether it can get the value of reading or not. So, write v2 is the pin that has been declared on the Blink application in order to display the value in a real-time basis, the value of temperature as well as humidity. It will also print the value of temperature and the current humidity value on the story monitor as well as LCD display at the same time. So basically, it will print out on the Blink application, on the story monitor and also on the LCD display. So basically, it will print at the same time in a real-time basis. Now moving on to the second sensor function which is MQ2 gas sensor. Okay, so here we have been declared to get the reading from MQ2 gas sensor 
and then we have been using map function in order for us to convert the analog value that we get from the MQ2 gas sensor in the range of 0 to 100 and right after that it will go to the if condition in order for us to check if the value gas is more or equal to the gas limit that we has been set earlier okay which means it has been reached the threshold then the buzzer will be toned okay and at the same time the LED will be turned on as well and in blink application it will send a notification of alert gas leakage detected so basically the user will be triggered and will be know as they already get an alert notification from the blink application and then as usual it will also print the value of gas on the serial monitor as well as on the LCD display at the same time in the real-time basis as well else if the value gas is not reach the gas limit it will then turn off the LED or basically the LED will not be turned on and the buzzer also will not be turned on okay and it will print on the serial monitor that the gas level is normal so basically for the gas sensor we have declared in the link application to use v1 as the pin and it will be displayed on the interface of link application the value that we got from the gas sensor moving on to the net sensor function which is flame sensor now as you can see over here we have declared integer value flame equal to digital read flame where this basically it reads and gets the value from the flame sensor itself and then over here we have used if else conditions where it will check if the value of flames is equal to one then the buzzer and also the LED will not be turned on else if the value flame was equal to zero then only the buzzer and also the LED will be turned on which means the LED will turn on the light and the buzzer will give a sound and then Blink application will notify the user on the Blink app that warning fire was detected and then at the serial monitor it will be print out a value of flame and also the message of warning fire was detected so now this is the last sensor functions that I'm going to explain, which is it is for ultrasonic sensor functions. So as you can see over here, we have declared digital write ultra trick, which is it is a um, trick of the ultrasonic itself. Okay, it here we emits the wave with a pin low, and then we have made a four microseconds delay. And over here. We will set it as high and it will be high for 10 microseconds. After that, ultra straight will pin as low back. And long t equal to pulse in ultra echo high is to read the ultra echo where it basically will trigger on reflect wave that hitting back on the pin time in microseconds. And then over here is where it's going to calculate the actual real distance and also the measurement of the water level you can see it take back the pulse in of ultra echo as high and then it will calculate from there and then after that only it will print on the serial monitor the value of the ultra side sensor in unit of cm and after that it will use a if condition to check if the distance is less than the value ultra that has been declared earlier on the above part, then the buzzer will not be turned on and the LED also will not be turned on the like. And on the serial monitor, it will be prompt out water level is normal. Else, if the distance of the water level is more than the value ultra that has been set out, then right away, a notification on Blink application on the user mobile will be notified or alert the user by sending a notification of alert, water level is high 
and it will also turn on the LED as well as turn on the buzzer and then on the serial monitor itself it will be alert the user with a message of alert water level is high so for this ultrasonic sensor we have declared a pin of v4 in the virtual write of blink application in cm unit and then it will also print out or display a value of water level that has been detected or get ready from the ultrasonic sensor on the lcd as well so basically all of the value that get from each of the sensor like um, DHT11 sensor, MQ2 gas sensor, flame sensor and also ultrasonic sensor all of the value that get from the sensor itself will be sent to the blink application and also to the serial monitor in a real-time basis so yeah that's all for my part thank you for watching and I hope that our explanations was really clear and benefited for all of you that are watching this video. Thank you so much. Bye.